We'll start with Greg Hunter. So, Coach, it sounded like you were giving Deuce a little uh, grief for defense uh, earlier, but your numbers defensively are pretty good. I mean, 15 to 5 in turnovers, 21 to 4 in points off turnovers. So, what did you think of your defense for the most part, especially in that second half run? I thought we did a better job handling ball screens, but then we got we got a little lazy and and didn't do as good a job. I think I think this this way for this team is the best way to handle ball screens. So uh, I, I thought that part of it was better. Um, we didn't do a very good job post defense, and we didn't really rebound the ball Greg the way we need to rebound it. Go ahead, John Antonic. Hey, Coach, I was curious, uh, the zone you threw out there in the second half, was that out of frustration or was that uh, just something to change things up? No, well, we worked on it. You know, we worked on it. We wanted to throw it out there and see what we did against uh, uh, another another team. Uh, and, and and we wanted to change the tempo a little bit. They were they were coming off of those ball screens uh, pretty hard at us. And that kind of that kind of stopped some of the, the ball screening things. But... Uh, it's a work in progress, John, to say the least. Charles Montgomery. Hey, Coach Huggins, so you had talked about it through the first three games. Emmett, I'm sorry, four games. Emmett trying to break out of his little bit of a rut that he's been in early on. So tonight he broke out. Um, just what does that do overall for you guys to be able to just move forward and hopefully have that continuously with him? Well, he, he took some bad shots during a during a stretch. They shot him too quick, and and then uh, he really got settled down. I think in the second half, and and he was huge in the second half. He's we you know we've been on him since he got here to be a little more assertive in taking the ball at the rim, and and he obviously uh, took it at the rim a couple times with with a lot of strength and. Uh, and then made a made a huge three. The the the, uh, the three that he made kind of put the game away for us. Next is Justin Jackson. Coach, uh, I don't know. There's a little bit under seven minutes left. Uh, the game's tied at sixty, and Deuce makes that play where he, he creates a loose ball by diving on the floor and forces Blair into the backcourt, and then eventually forces him. Uh, and to travel, uh, how big of a of a play is that uh, overall for you guys tonight? Well, I think there were a lot of plays in that stretch, Justin. That certainly was a big play, but there were a lot of plays in that stretch. I think, you know, Derek got went up and got a rebound between two guys. That was a, that was a man's rebound. Um, Emmett made some plays as well, but I think I think uh, Deuce Deuce's Get knocking a ball in the backcourt, I think really it forced them to take a, a, a hurried shot, which obviously got us possession of the ball again. And, and kind of that was part of the run that kind of put the game out of reach for them. Skylar Callahan. Hey, Coach, seems like you guys had a lot more success in the second half, pounding the ball underneath. Was it? More so of, of just the approach or just being able to have those bigs out on the floor? It was having the bigs out on the floor, having the right bigs out on the floor. And uh, we got bigs that, uh, that, that are jump shooters, and then we've got uh, bigs like Oscar and Derek who are power players. And uh, we, had, we had power players out there that, during that stretch. Next is Cody Nesper. Um, so, Coach, you mentioned the uh, the run in the second half where you kind of took the lead. And w just what do you think changed there? I, I think it was um, Deuce hit a three pointer that kicked off a, a ten to nothing run. Just what do you think changed after that? Well, Emmett hit a big three pointer. Uh, Emmett drove it at the basket and, and, and scored over top of him. Derek kept balls alive for us on the offensive glass and scored. In the offensive glass, we they were blocking shots and really changing shots, and we really weren't able to, to score close. And Derek came in with that changed everything in terms of being able to score close. And, uh, I thought, you know, I, I, Taz made a huge shot for us in transition. I thought, I thought it was a that, that was a good team run right there. We'll go back to Greg. 
Bob, a little bit more on Derek. I'm sure he was a little frustrated because of the foul trouble in the first half and he hardly got to play. What kind of, you know, inspiration was that when he finally got and stayed on the floor in the second half? He really seemed to sort of take charge. Well, he kept bugging the heck out of me trying to get back in the game, and I kept telling him I need him at the end, particularly in light of the fact that, that Gabe got in foul trouble. Uh, you know, we need one of those two guys on the floor. And, and uh, you know, we got – then we got in more foul trouble, so we really had to put Derek in. I may have put him in even a little sooner than I wanted to, but the whole game changes whenever he's in there because, you know, he just – he separates people. He keeps balls alive uh, on the offensive glass, and obviously he's able to score it in there. Next question is from Mike Kazaza. Bob, how are you? Good, Mike. Good. Um, you just mentioned there that was a good team run right there. Um, if, if you get out of there today and you don't win, and you, or you win, I'm sorry. If you get out of there but you don't have that run where it looks like everyone, everything comes together at the opportune time and you know, maybe even searching for something emphatic like that for a while, is it the same or did you kind of need to have that in your pocket going home? Oh, I think that I think that helped us. I mean, I you know, they, they obviously knew how bad they were the first half. <laughs> And I and I think that was important because hopefully now they understand that we're we're able to score when we move the ball. We we have a hard time scoring when you don't move the defense. If you let the defense stay planted, it you know that that fortifies uh, their their defense so much more. And we got to move them. And, and I think that's this time of year, you know, I, I, I said that a little earlier, but I think this time of year, guys coming off of, uh, you know, open gyms and, and so forth, that, you know, where they do dribble it and dribble it, dribble it, which is fine. They're trying to work on their game. I got that. But, you know, we need to, we need to play a whole lot more together, which I thought during that run we did. That was, there were, uh, I think, Justin mentioned, you know, Deuce knocking the ball loose, but Derek got hard rebounds. And, uh, Oscar made some some tough baskets inside. Deuce uh, Deuce was you know was good at the offensive end as well. And Taz had a huge shot for us in transition, huge. Uh, you know, to, to really to kind of get us going. So I thought I thought you know that was a team thing, and hopefully that carries over into uh, the next well the rest of the year. Hopefully. We'll go next to Ron Bailey. Hey, Coach, how are you? I'm okay. How you doing? Okay. Real quick, um, what was the impact of, of your adjustment doubling Wahab in the second half? I thought thought it kind of took him out of a rhythm, made him a little uncomfortable. And then question number two, is this McBride guy really turning into a big-time point guard? He was able to score, yet control the tempo and kind of lead you guys to victories in a number of ways. Well, he's getting better and better. He wasn't a point guard in high school, so it's it's been a, a learning experience for him. And, and you know, he's a he's a smart kid. He's a he's a great kid, and he listens and tries to do what you ask him to do. And and he and, and consequently, he continues to get better. Um, I forgot what the first question was you asked me. You gave me one of them two parts. It was, it, it sure. was um, doubling Wahab. What was the impact in your estimation of doubling Wahab? to begin this, the second half? Well, getting Gabe his fourth fouls really was what the end result, um, you know, and I didn't I didn't want to do it because I need I need Gabe and I need Derek on the floor, one of the two anyways. And, uh, we, we doubled it, but we, I mean, it just, we, we doubled it was, it was more uh, a reaction than, than anything else. And, you know, the problem is it seems like they can double Derek and everybody and, and our guys, and every time we go to double somebody, the whistle gets to blowing. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for your time. Yep. A couple more for Coach. Go ahead, John. Any hugs? Um, how much is the, the, the foul trouble you're getting with the bigs, your guards struggling to handle dribble drives and fight off ball screens? <laughs> Um, I, you know, I think I think we're working we're working through it. I mean, in, in some ways, it's not a bad thing because we get to put other guys on the floor and get them some experience. Um, 
but you know, Derek's first one he got out, he was out on the floor guarding a perimeter guy, and and it, you know, you tell him a thousand times to get your hands out, and he had him in, and and they called him for for pushing off with his with his forearm, and, which he which he probably did, you know, but you can do that in open gym, you know, you you, you can do that in the summertime, and then we just got to help him break that habit. Uh, you no, know, I don't. And I don't know. That's why we got a bunch of them. And go ahead, Justin. Oh, Jim, just kind of curious. Uh, kind of talked about the other day about starting a lot of a lot of the season on the road. You guys have played mm -hmm. five games on the road now. I'm just kind of wondering what is this bunch like uh, to travel with? Uh, you know, what's it been like uh, to be with these guys for you know five games away from home? Well, they're great guys. I mean, they're 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 not low maintenance. They're no maintenance. You know, they do what you ask them to do, and um, you know, they're 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 really good people. Um, you know, the, the the road thing. You know, if we would go back a few years when we were in the Big East, any road win in the Big East was a great win. Uh, and and so to come into a Big East school and and went on the road. The last time we came in here, we got beat by, it seemed like a hundred. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a good feeling being, being able to get a big East win and be able to get out of here. And Ron, you can have our last question. Okay, thank you. Coach, you, um, you've shown that a, that, that a seasoned veteran can, can change what he does in midstream in the sense that you guys aren't pressing and trapping all over the place. How has that adjustment been this year for you? I mean, you, you, you have to adjust your personnel. And our personnel, when we had, when we had uh, JC and we had Dax, I mean, we had two terrific on the ball guys. And then we had Nate Adrian and, and John Holden over the ball, two long guys and guys that, that could really run. So when the ball, you know, went over their head. They could they could chase it down and be in the play. We don't have that now. You know, but we're bigger, we're stronger, we're more physical. Uh, our guards are bigger. Um, so you know, you adjust to your personnel, and that's that's what we're trying to do. And I'm you know I'm blessed to have a a coaching staff that helps me with that a great deal. Thanks, coach. Mm -hmm. All right, Coach, thanks for the time. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. That'll conclude the interviews this evening. Thank you, everyone.